Welcome to the November edition of the Tempo Storm Meta Snapshot. The order shift meta has been heavily shaken up by balance adjustments made toward the end of October. Dirt Rune and Buff Dragon were buffed thanks to the changes to Golem Lord, Multi Elemental Neophyte, and Dion Scarlet Scion. The cost adjustments to Neophyte and Golem Lord allow Dirt to come online much quicker, and the added effects to Dion mean he's no longer a brick if drawn early. Now, Buff and Dirt run rampant in Tier 1, and many previously strong archetypes such as Heal Haven have significantly dropped in popularity due to their weaknesses against the new top lists. So far, Loot Sword has been the only deck able to keep up, and thus the meta has mostly narrowed down to the three key players of Buff, Dirt, and Loot. Let's take a closer look at what's changed. Buff Dragon, an archetype based around increasing the defense of Dragoncraft followers in the deck to enable their payoff effects, has been in the game for quite a while now, but this is the first time it's ever been a top-tier deck. The buff to Dion caused its power level to skyrocket, and now it's the Tier 1 deck of choice. Currently, the most popular version of Buff Dragon is a hybrid variant that includes an Evolve engine to make use of Coral Spirit, a key card in the Loot Sword, Dirt Rune, and Heal Haven matchups. Alice, Blooming Dancer, and Kyrie allow the deck to draw plenty of cards while staying ahead on tempo. Ideally, Buff Dragon wants to hit as many buff cards in the early game as possible, pressure the mid game with large followers such as as buffed Grand Slam Tamer, then threatened to finish with 12 face damage from Coach Joe in the late game. Like Buff Dragon, Dirt Rune was pushed towards success quite heavily by the recent balance patch, multi-elemental neophytes changed to 1 PP granted the deck a lot of flexibility, and a turn 5 Golem Lord going first can often win the game on the spot. Dirt as an archetype is centered around Earth Sigils and Earth Right mechanics. It aims to stack up Sigils in the early game and use them for big swings with powerful Earthrite effects, such as that of Golem Lord and Levi, Wizard of Ages. Once seven sigils have been consumed, Colossal Summoning becomes a powerful finisher, and Pascal, Radiant Oracle, gains the potential to set up huge boards. As Dirt Rune is quite difficult to pilot optimally, it didn't immediately become popular in tournament play post-patch, but as players have continued to practice with it, the deck has proven itself to be comfortably one of the best decks in the meta. Loot Sword once again finds itself at the top of the meta, even after the earlier nerf to Untold Kick, it easily remains a Tier 1 deck. Illustrious Thief, Lyrala Luminous Cleric, and Metatron all rotated out this expansion, but new options such as Kick, Dashing Duelist, and Tears of Tribulation have kept Loot's power in place. As ever, Loot Sword aims to play or fuse 7 loot cards, then finish the opponent off with Storm Followers and direct damage using Dread Pirate's Flag Tokens, Tidal Gunner, and the Leader Effect of Roger's Ruler of the Seas. Loot Sword boasts early game presence, a powerful mid game, and explosive late game reach with high OTK potential, it is a truly well-rounded deck that can handle just about any threat in the meta if played to its fullest potential. Learn more about Loot Sword with Tempo Storm's official guide here. The recent balance patch has widened the power gap between Tier 1 and 2 decks, and there are a limited number of archetypes that can successfully compete with those at the top. Evo Blood is one of the few decks that can. A mid-range deck that aims to stack up evolved followers quickly to enable payoffs such as Alice, Grimnir, and Tivali, Evo Blood is quite simple to play and can set up some very strong mid-game boards that can be difficult to clear. Ruler of Retribution can be invoked as early as turn 6, and many decks will struggle to remove Leon and Alfie, Companions, one of the strongest transmuted cards this expansion. Heal Haven has fallen from grace quite a bit. Powerful in the previous patch's meta, it finds itself weak in this one, with unfavorable matchups across the board, especially against Buff Dragon. Angel of Darkness is becoming more and more popular as a tech against Buff Dragon and Dirt Rune's Pascal turns, and this comes with the side effect of hurting Heal Haven as well. Still, the deck remains in Tier 2, as the way it functions hasn't changed, and its game plan is still strong in a vacuum. Use the Evolve effect of Alluvia Graceful Lady in combination with healing effects to build very tall, difficult to remove boards, and threaten to finish with Gene World Walker. Given the current state of the meta, it's difficult to recommend anything that isn't the top trio of Buff Dragon, Loot Sword, and Dirt Rune. They simply stand head and shoulders above all other decks 
decks in the meta right now, to the point that even tier 2 decks struggle to compete. Buff Dragon is the simplest of the three, with a very linear game plan, which makes it the best option for those looking for a relaxing, brain-off climb. Loot and Dirt are much more skill-expressive, and may be more appealing for those looking to invest into truly mastering a deck. The latest balance patch has certainly affected the meta drastically, and perhaps not for the better. Previously, various Blood, Forest, Haven, and Portal decks were in a fine place, but their struggle to compete with the newly buffed Dirt Rune and Buff Dragon has mostly removed them from the meta, leaving us with a much narrower landscape than before. Add in the fact that the buff to Bakaris Peppy Ghosty was not enough to make Shadow viable, and we find ourselves a true three-deck meta where every option other than buff, loot, and dirt feels subpar. It could be argued that Buff Dragon in particular should not have been pushed so much because the deck is simple, linear, and over-reliant on drawing its buff first and payoffs later, which leads to many unsatisfying games for both those playing it and those playing against it. With the Tier 1 decks being as dominant as they are though, it's very unlikely this meta will remain in place until the mini-expansion drops unless we see another balance patch. In the meantime, keep an eye out for further developments in tournament play by following Ziff underscore SF on Twitter. We'll see you all in next month's edition of the Tempo Storm Meta Snapshot.